This video is going to answer the questions that were posted in the comment section of my Ask Me video. I thought I'd get more questions than that because my inbox is constantly filled up with questions, but anyway, we'll roll with this. First question comes from I'm Satindal, and she writes, Yo, when will you be answering the questions? I'm answering them now. The next question comes from Redbone Africana 86. Some black men's denial. Those that say they like one type but date those on the contrary of, or those who say I don't discriminate but stick to a particular type until he eventually wipes that particular type. I'm tired of the contradiction. Why do you think this happens? Why say one thing then do another? I personally respect the man who from day one says he only dates chocolate women or mixed girls versus the one who says I don't discriminate but dates the same type of woman. So the question, in case anyone missed it, is why do you think this happens? Well, before I answer that question, watch this video clip real quick. Can you show me the doll that you like best or that you'd like to play with? This one. I like that one. Can you show me the doll that is the nice doll? And why is that the nice doll? He's white. The children in that video clip are probably five and six years old. They have not yet learned that it is socially unacceptable to say certain things. And they probably won't learn it until they're maybe 9, 10, 11, or even 12 years old. Or until somebody really gets on them and says, hey, stop saying that. Here are a couple of older children who are just starting to learn that what they're saying is in contradiction to themselves, like the lady says in the video. Which is the pretty girl? The one on the right most likely. The one on the right most likely? And yeah. why would you say that? Well, to me, she has the prettiest hair. For older children who are now at a point and they're thinking that they understand that what they are saying is in conflict with how they feel about themselves, it's very difficult. This is hard. I, I didn't hear you. This is hard. Oh, it's hard? You can virtually see the anxiety on their faces. I can't decide. The second girl is probably struggling because she knows how she really feels, but she's also at the age where she knows that you're not supposed to say certain things. When a little bit more time passes, even these older children will learn not to say anything like this at all, even if that's how they really feel. If you continue to say things like that up into your late teens and into your adulthood, people are going to think something is wrong with you, like this chick. I like light skin better because I feel it's more beautiful. I don't like dark skin because I it looks dirty to me. It's not like a pretty color. Now I'm not saying that these black men are as extreme as that woman that we just saw, but the situation you're talking about is still an example of black people learning not to say certain things. You're not supposed to say that you prefer light skin over dark skin or that you prefer white women over black women. If you do, people are going to say something is wrong with you. So to avoid all that crap and all the accusations being hurled at them, they just say, oh, well, I don't discriminate, or these are the type of women that I come in contact with the most. I'm not saying that everybody who says things like that is trying to hide their true preference, but some people who say that are. Next question is from Mark Daddy. How many wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Always wondered. The answer to that is yellow. Next question. Oh look, another one from Mark Daddy. When will the Miami Dolphins finally win another Super Bowl? I'm going to say if it doesn't happen in the future, it's not going to happen. And how long will Bill Parcells stay with the team? Well, I don't know who Bill Parcells is, but he'll probably stay with the team until he finds his own apartment or his own house and then he'll move out. That's usually how it works. The next question comes from Junebug Obama. Do you think the church and Christianity has hindered the progress of the black race or helped us? If blacks had not embraced Christianity and had chosen another religion or no religion at all, do you think we would be better off today or worse? Explain and elaborate on your answer. Then he adds down in parentheses, by the way, this is in no way saying that all blacks are doing bad. Plenty of us are doing extremely well and living positive, productive lives. I can hear him now. Of course she's going to say yes because she's an atheist. Um, I think religion may hinder black people in some ways, but not really. There's something about black people that makes us more prone to religiosity than other races. So I see religion as more of like a symptom of something than a cause of something. So if you're asking me if I think that black people would be a lot further along as a whole if they weren't so religious, then I'd say no. 
The next question comes from Ibn Sheba. What do you see the black community being in 100 years? I'll assume you're talking about the United States. It's hard to predict what it's going to be like in 100 years for black people in this country, not because it's the future, nobody knows the future, but because we're going through a very swift demographic change right now. In 2000, uh, for the first time in this country, blacks were no longer the minority majority, or majority minority, whichever one it is. And it's projected that in 2050, whites will no longer be the majority. They'll still be the largest group, but they won't be the majority. So to go another 60 years beyond that, who knows? Who knows what the racial makeup will be in 2100? Or I guess it'd be 2110. We're already starting to see some problems and some clashes between black and brown in the southwest. Politically, I think we're going to become less and less relevant as our numbers start to shrink or either other races start overtaking us. One thing I will say is that if the Latinos overtake the whites, see, with the whites in power, at least with them, blacks can kind of lay a white guilt trip on them and kind of get things from them. But with these Latinos, they have no guilt whatsoever because they didn't enslave anybody and they didn't make anybody ride on the back of the bus, so they won't have any sympathy. So all this whining and guilt tripping that some blacks like to do, it's going to come to an end if the Latinos take over. Next, we have 66MikeDove99. And he writes, I would like you to discuss intelligence and race. Well, that's not a question, is it? What about race and intelligence? Actually, I had a long two or three month debate or discussion, whatever you want to call it, with some whites about race. And during that, we did discuss intelligence. But there are so many things wrapped up into that, I'm not even sure what you're exactly asking about. But apparently, IQ tests have been given to people of different races, and when they grouped the people together by race, they found that Jews score way off the charts above everybody else. Then uh, they have Asians, then whites, then Latinos who can be of any race, and then blacks. I think that what these tests are picking up on is not necessarily about intelligence, but rather about differences in adaptation. Next on the docket, we have Hatius. I know people say Hastius, but I say Hatius. I just want to ask you a question, but you will ignore me as per normal. Being that that's not a question, I'm just going to go ahead and ignore that. Next, we have Lil Wayne, and he asks, When was the last time you had a man? Five years or ten years ago? Neither. He then writes a follow-up question, which says, why do you believe since Cracker gave you a job, racism is our problem? I can't answer that question because I never said that since Cracker gave me a job, racism is our problem. I haven't even said Cracker in any of my videos except for this one. That was just because you wrote it. Moving on, next question comes from Bazodi2. Is negative liberty the key to a successful, harmonious society? Well, I'll say that one thing that I think is important, I don't know if it's the key, but at least it's important, is that uh, if you want a harmonious, successful society, it helps if everybody's on the same page. And by that, I mean people in the society will say, okay, these are our standards, this is the type of society we want to have, our government will spend money on this, but not this, here's what language we're going to speak, here's what holidays we're going to celebrate, here's what we're going to do if this happens or that happens. Stuff like that. Now, before you say, well, that's not possible, I'm not saying it's possible to find people who are going to be on the same page about every single thing, but as much as you can be on the same page, the better. The next question comes from Orville9999. Who do you think has it worse, men or women? I have two answers. If we're talking about people who are poor and lower class or living in the ghetto, then I would say men have it harder. For example, in the inner city, it's the males who are getting shot up and beat down and forced to join gangs and arrested and all that stuff. But then when just talking about poor people in general, if you're a man who can't support your family for whatever reason, people are going to see you as a loser. Whereas if you're a woman who's having problems supporting your family, people have more mercy on you. Oh, that poor woman, she's holding it together the best she can. And I believe there's more programs to help women too, if I'm not mistaken. But on the high end of things, um, a woman really can't compete with a man who's got all his stuff together. I mean, look at all the big corporations still run mostly, overwhelmingly, by men. We've yet to have a female president, not that I want one. If you take away class and all that stuff and just look at men and women nature-wise, women have it harder because women have to be tied up for nine months carrying the baby. They're physically weaker. They have to have periods, and that's such bullcrap. Periods are bullcrap. There's more pressure on women to be beautiful and young. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Next question comes from I one in a billion. In reference to your videos about marriage, successful black, female, and single, in the video you said the women were too old and they should have been looking for marriage-minded men in their youth, 
but you didn't say any specific age ages. So what age ages should women be looking for marriage minded men and what age groups in men should they target? I don't have a specific age at which women should start seeking to get married. I was more trying to make the point that women can't afford to say, okay, I'm just going to wait till I'm 30 to start looking for a husband. I need to get all my plan out the way, all my schooling out the way. I want to go see the world and all that stuff, and then I'll think about marriage. Women need to be more of the mindset that whenever Mr. Wright comes along, I'm going to accept him. If a man that you think is going to be a good match for you comes along at 24, then go ahead and pursue a relationship with him. You don't have to get married at 24. You might get married at 29, but don't say, well, no, I'm busy with school. Go away. And as far as what age of men you should target, well, first of all, I don't think women should go after men. They should let the men come to them. But you should accept advances for whatever age of men you're attracted to.